Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Janina Jeff, staff bioinformatics scientist here at Illumina, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. James Lillard. Hi, James Lillard, professor, senior associate dean for research and innovation at Morehouse School of Medicine. I want to talk about the important work that you're doing. So could you tell us a little bit about the CARES project that you have going on at Morehouse School of Medicine? So Morehouse CARES, uh, CARES stands for Comprehensive Approaches to Reimagine Health Equity Solutions. So it's, it's essentially uh, a version 2.0 of our total cancer care protocol that we uh, launched in 2018, 2019. Uh, performed us through the pandemic and a lot of uh, other things that occurred from 2020 to, to now, um, where we enrolled uh, participants into a uh, precision medicine, precision oncology medicine um, implementation study. Okay. Uh, so at the time of consent, we would we would take um, a buckle swab to get germline DNA. Uh, we would run back to the pathology department to get uh, paraffin embedded blocks for CLIA NGS sequencing. So that was among the first study of its kind to implement a precision oncology study in a safety net hospital setting. And that, that was made, um, funding was made possible from the American Association for Cancer Research. Oh, nice. Uh, you know, they were really ahead of the curve in, with respect to diversity and inclusion initiatives at that time. When was uh, this? Uh, 2018. Okay. Right. Uh, now, so fast forward now, we learned a lot of lessons of how to implement precision medicine in, in that safety net hospital, those com community oncology clinics. Uh, and now we're launching CARES, which will be what we think will be uh, the first, if not the largest, uh, comprehensive community-based precision health initiative in the country, focused on uh, people of African ancestry that live in the Black Belt, a region in the South that has the highest mortality um, uh, rates of, for many chronic diseases that span from South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana. Okay, okay. And so, you know, we saw a statistic yesterday in Francis's talk that only 2% of genomic data sets contain individuals of African ancestry. Can you talk a little bit about how CARES will kind of add to that right. or kind of ho hopefully dissipate that disparity? Exactly. You know, and it's, and it's, it's really interesting fact and phenomenon, but it, it makes sense if you, if you step back and think about it. If we look historically about where those uh, samples were collected over time, they, they did this dance a, a, around this black belt. Um, so they were actually collected in um, health systems in Boston, uh, maybe as far south as Nashville, Tennessee, but as far west as um, California. Oh, wow. So it just danced around regions where we see the highest populations of African Americans. So I feel like health disparity research is getting a lot of spotlight in the last couple of years. Right. Um, and a lot of people want to do health disparity research, particularly scientists of color. We, we have a personal connection to health disparity research. Right. What do you think are some of the big misconceptions around health equity and health disparity research that folks are maybe not, or not at the forefront of everyone's minds right now? Wow. You know, it, it, it really benefits all of us, mm. all, all Americans. Um, you know, it's not so much you know, we will probably find new variants, uh, variants of unknown significance will become variants of known significance in the populations that we serve. But that also means some of those variants of unknown significance that we may find in the European population will be discovered as well, mm. just by adding diversity and making sure everyone's included in some of these precision medicine initiatives. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. You know, um, this idea that variants we discover in new populations can serve as drug targets, can serve as exactly. like candidates for protection, right. candidates for right. increased screening for those who might be at risk. I think there's a lot oh, of yeah. power. So I have another question and you can, you can pick how you want to answer this question. So over the things that have happened in the last 10 to 20 years in genomics research, what are some things you think have like positively impacted uh, communities of color and particularly the black community or negatively impacted? communities of color. Wow, that, that's, um, that, may, that may require a whole 
um, we can write a television book on that. series. <laughs> right, right. Um, I think, uh, and recently, you know, for good and bad, it's, these are some of the best of times and the worst of times. Um, some of the events leading up to um, 2020, the pandemic, yeah. where we saw how COVID wreaked havoc in our communities, yeah. um, higher uh, incidence, higher mortality rates for people of African ancestry. Uh, we saw racial bias uh, result in unrest, B Black Lives Matter movement, yeah. uh, and much more. But it, and somehow it led us down a path where health equity is now prominent and aspired for. It's also led us down a path of just showing how important diversity and inclusion is, not only in research, but in, in, in uh, as workforce development for, um, for many of us, so. My next question, you took it right out of my mouth. I was gonna ask you, tell us a little bit about how we have so many um, leaders here at this conference, many of which want to kind of add to the diversity in genomics through diversity in the workforce. And so can you speak a little bit about how you're doing that through uh, Morehouse Cares? Thank, thanks so much. Let, let me first say that bef even before launching Morehouse Cares, many of you, uh, many of the audience may not know that uh, we actually, Morehouse School of Medicine has uh, the number one uh, master's in biotechnology program in the United States. Oh, wow. Uh, online program. So that's ahead of uh, uh, schools like Johns Hopkins and Harvard. Oh, then we need to get them at Illumina. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, also with the help of my colleague, uh, Angelita Howard, she's a dean of our online education. Yeah. That really set us down this path. Um, we, we also have established a master's in health informatics. Oh, wow. Okay, so all of these things are kind of leading to and are, are absolutely required to implement precision medicine. So in the future, we hope to add uh, similar online graduate programs to reach uh, people all over the country, frankly, in uh, genetic counseling. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Uh, precision medicine. Yeah. Uh, and much more. So you're building the whole infrastructure. I mean, we're oh, gonna, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's amazing. Oh yeah, you know, I, we we you know, I saw firsthand just uh, you know, we talked about two to three percent of uh, in terms of inclusion of persons of African ancestry in some of these data sets that are going to make precision medicine, yeah, precision diagnostics a reality. Um, you know, unfortunately, we it's the same type of disparity we see in terms of the number of scientists oh, in yeah. biopharma, as you could probably attest to. I feel like it might even be smaller. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but no, I, I think there is a lot of promise in the future, uh, training up the next generation, making sure that we're asking the right questions. We have diversity at every section of this entire ecosystem. I'm really looking forward to it. So there were a lot of big announcements, a lot of great talks over the last day. What has been something that kind of has stood out for you? Not, not any one particular thing. I'm just excited by how uh, the cost of sequencing has come down, uh, largely through Illumina's efforts and groundbreaking technology. Uh, I'm also very excited for um, the acceptance, and it, it, it seems there's a movement towards an absolutely requirement uh, for the return of results to participants in studies, in genomic studies. So we'll have fewer, you know, yet another genetic epidemiology study, but more of these precision medicine or genomic medicine implementation studies that on one hand, we'll be able to discover new uh, variants of disease, new biomarkers, new drug targets. But on the other hand, we can return that information to patients and their providers so we can improve their health. Yeah. And, and health outcomes. Yeah, that's yeah. really, really, really exciting. What are your thoughts about return of results to underrepresented and historically excluded populations? Oh, you know, that that's absolutely a requirement for as, as we, you know, we part, we're open to partner with obviously government agencies, with industry. And we, we have this unwritten, uh, although pretty strict social contract we have with our community. Uh, that leads from everything, whoever we partner with has to be committed to diversity and inclusion, mm -hmm. health equity, providing access to uh, genomic medicine, uh, and 
but maybe maybe not least, uh, shared value. Yes. And that value share doesn't have to be uh, monetary, but we must share results. Uh, that's an, that's almost a priceless uh, um, thing to be granted or given to a participant in a study to improve their, their lives. One of the things that I like about the work that you're doing, this idea of community-based research, this right. idea of trying to find what is that common ground that we can end this like transactional research. Yes. You know, so the Absolutely. work you're doing is literally putting an end to that. And I hope that we continue to see those trends going forward. So thank you. Thank you for the work that you're doing. And All right. Thanks yes. so much. Yay.